Good morning. Uh, my name is Ebony Griffin. I am the director of Revenue Cycle for our Cancer Services Department for Riverside Health System. And this morning, we're going over the survivorship program for our financial talk. Topics we're going to cover this morning are, of course, our locations where we are located. Uh, we are both on South Side, actually South Side Peninsula and on the Eastern Shore. Uh, we'll show you how to read a patient statement, when are you billed for your services, how can you pay, um, teach you about copay assistance, what does it mean, how can we enroll, and then financial assistance, what do we offer, how do you apply, and then we'll bring on someone at the end to go over any additional questions that we may have. So our locations, we are currently located on the peninsula, a peninsula with our Peninsula Cancer Institute and Cancer Infusion Centers. We have locations in Newport News, Gloucester and Williamsburg. We're also on the south side at Cancer Specialists of Tidewater and Cancer Infusion Centers. And we are locations in Chesapeake, Suffolk and Virginia Beach. And we also have a location in Onancock uh, on the Eastern Shore, and that's our Shore Cancer Center. And that is actually an office and infusion center in one. So how do you read a patient statement? So when you uh, are a patient of Riverside, you will receive one statement, which will encompass several areas of anywhere you have been within the health system. So this here is the top of a statement. And it will have your basic information on the top and it and thanks you for choosing Riverside. And it'll tell you what exactly you owe uh, and the due date. It will break it down by any charges, uh, and insurance payments and adjustments, and then what your balances do at the bottom. There's options here that tell you, you can use my chart. We do encourage patients if you can to I sign up with my chart. My chart is really just for appointments. You can make payments. You can set up payment plans within my chart. And then we also have a customer service um, office that you can call here for anywhere Monday through Friday from eight to five. So this is gonna be how to read a statement that will show charges from one of our locations. Here, this is a, a separate patient. So the patient, it tells you where the patient was seen and what date. It will have your account number on the side and it will break down what exactly that you had that date. So this here shows generally a patient came in for infusion and it shows what charges were on the claim for uh, that date of service. If the insurance is paid, the information is gonna be down here. It's gonna tell you how much the insurance paid, if you had any deductibles or co-insurance is applied and how much we adjusted off for um, our contractual amount. And then at the bottom, it will show you what your actual uh, present patient balance would be, which is the 3993.29. So when do you receive a patient statement? So all insurance payments have to be received for that particular visit before you will receive a statement. We do not bill out statements, partial statements for uh, charges. A lot of times insurances will come in and pay one part of a claim, but not the other. We do not bill until the claim has been finalized and all balances due to the patient are uh, due. And then that's when a statement will come out. So what type of items will you be billed for? So we have your co-payment, which is a flat fee for when each time you see the physician. And that usually applies to office visits uh, when you go in just to see the physician and you are get a charge a co-payment. And they usually collect that right at the front desk when you come in. A deductible is an amount that you will have to pay each year for your eligible services before your insurance will actually pick up on any share of what you uh, of the cost of your uh, visit. And that could be a lot of times patients will have a, a flat deductible, a family deductible. Uh, and then once you meet that, then your coinsurance has come into play. And that's just going to be a portion of the cost that you would pay after your deductible has been met. Most insurances are like 80, 20. The insurance company will pay 80%. You'll be responsible for 20% of your bill. What is an out-of-pocket out maximum? So this is the amount that you would pay, the most you would pay in one year. Most patients will have maybe a $7,000, just, just as an example, out-of-pocket maximum. So once you've met that you've paid $7,000 for 
of your funds towards your medical care. That's considered an out-of-pocket maximum. And then once you reach that, the insurance company will send something out to the patient and the providers to let them know that you've reached your out-of-pocket pot- pocket, excuse me, maximum, and then you will no longer be responsible for any charges throughout the rest of that calendar year. It does start back up usually in January. So anything from before January, uh, once you've met that out of pocket, then you won't be responsible for any visits, any payments at that point. So how can you pay your bill? So there's different ways you can pay your bill. We have, of course, you can use the usual check or money order or credit card, that information that comes with your statement, it tells you exactly where to send it. You can call the customer service center and at the number provided, and you can do credit card or debit card. And I do believe too, that you can also do a pay by check. And then you can pay at any Riverside facility. So if you owe, say you owe Peninsula Cancer to $20, but you go see another physician, they can actually take that payment for you at that location. Um, they had to, it's as simple as selecting where you wanted the payment to go, and then they can post that for you there. So you don't necessarily have to go into your doctor's office to make the payment. And then visit pay, which is new to Riverside. It just uh, came, uh, we just went live with that, I believe, I want to say about two months ago. And that information is provided here in the link. You can go there and then they can actually help you with making your payment online. The copay assistance is another area that we have that is helpful for some patients. Uh, it is assistance by some drug manufacturers do offer assistance with coinsurances on the drugs that they provide or that they manufacture. Uh, so to enroll, what usually happens is once you've been placed on a treatment regimen, we have um, we have staff that works within our authorization department who goes in sees if that medication and has a drug copay assistance program, and we can enroll you in that program. The only thing about that is it does not work for government payers. So if you're Medicare, Medicaid, TRICARE, those payers are excluded from these types of programs. It's only for commercial payment, uh, patients. Sorry. So once you uh, get the uh, approval for that, what happens is, once your insurance pays, then we take the explanation of benefits that comes from your payer, we submit that to the drug company. And a drug company will pay whatever the coinsurance would be on that particular medication. Sometimes there may be a five to $25 copayment due by the patient, but if that copay is actually, or coinsurance is actually say $4,000 for that particular drug, the drug companies will actually pay all but that $25. And they usually, it, it usually is a year to year program. You will have to be re-enrolled each year. But once we get you set up on the program, we have, we have a tracking system that keeps track of when patients are eligible for the time frame. And as long as the patient's still on that particular medication, everything should just flow um, each year for you for that. So financial help. So we do offer several types of financial help for patients who find that they may not be able to pay a copay, co-insurance, or even patients that don't have insurance. So what we do offer is financial assistance. And then that is done through the website link that I have here. And I believe that the slideshow may be uh, available afterwards. I'm not quite sure, but uh, we do offer financial assistance through the website link here. We also offer payment plans. So you would just contact our customer service number at the number listed uh, here, 1-800-621-7677. Or you can actually email billandhelp at rfvhs.com, and then they can reach out to you and set you up on payment plans. Health Fund Solutions is a company that we've actually just come aboard with probably in the past year. And they are very helpful with patients who say you're out of work because you're in treatment and you can't afford your premium. What they do is actually come in and they will pay your premium for you and then help you find other insurance, um, maybe through the exchange program. 
And that way you are not going without being able to um, get, get your, receive your in, uh, treatment. Because a lot of times patients feel if I don't have my insurance or something happens to my insurance, I can't get treated. That's not how it we do. You know, if you, even if without insurance, you will be treated. We will help you as much as we can to provide you with some type of coverage, see if we can get your insurance uh, back up and running. Whatever we can do, we will do that for you. And Health Fund Solutions actually has a contact number here, 800-304-4005, or they have a website link here, which is included in the slideshow. And then also to, you know, COVID-19, we've been in this now for almost two years, and we do offer um, deferred payments for patients that have been affected by COVID-19. Whether you lost your job, you had COVID yourself and couldn't work. And so if you have issues with that, you also could call the customer service number. And then they can help you with setting that up for deferred payments for that. And then when the deferment runs out, you know, if it needs to be extended or you need more information about it, you would just contact the customer service number, provide them with your info, and then they can help you from there. So that is the end of my part of the presentation. And I would also like for our additional questions, we're going to bring in Jennifer Brown, who is the manager of, cancer, of our cancer registry here at Riverside Health System. And she's also our chairman of the survivorship committee. So thank you. Hi, thank you, Ebony. Hi, it's welcome, Jennifer. Great to join you. Um, thank you for that presentation. Uh, I think it's very uh, insightful and gives folks a lot of information. I have a couple of questions uh, that were posed to us from patients uh, from the Riverside Health System. First question is, how can I get an estimate of what it will all cost? So to get an estimate, you would just contact the customer service number, which is 1-800-621-7677 and then they can provide you with an estimate of what your treatments would be. And that could be for um, your infusion treatments, radiation treatments, even something that's being done over at the hospital. And they can help you with that. Is there a way that I can consolidate all of my Riverside bills into one payment? Yes, actually. Once again, you would contact the customer service number at 1-800-621-7677, uh, and they can actually combine, because we have several patients that go to all different parts of Riverside, you know, every, there's somewhere everywhere, but those bills can be consolidated into one monthly payment plan. The only thing with that is if a new bill comes in that is not part of that payment plan, we just need the patient to reach out to the customer service um, office, and then they can go ahead and add it to the existing plan. Okay. Will I have a copay for my doctor's visit and then a separate copay for my treatment? That depends on your insurance. Most insurances, most commercial insurances anyway, they have a separate copay for when you see the visit. So anytime you see the doctor one-on-one, -on -one, you may have a, a set copay. Uh, for treatment, though, they, that's processed a little differently, and that falls under your insurance co-insurance piece of your insurance. So a lot of times you'll have your copay if you see the doctor, but if you have treatment either the same day or the next day, then you will get a separate bill for whatever co-insurance that you would owe on that particular plan. But it's all based on the insurance itself. Okay. Can I still come into my appointment even if I can't afford my copay? Absolutely. We do not turn away anyone who can't afford a copay. If you can't afford your copay and you know in advance, give the office a ring, let them know you have an appointment coming up. Uh, would it be okay if you if they bill you for your copay? And that'll be fine. We do we do have that happen. A copay is are supposed to be collected, you know, at the time of service, but we know patients don't always have their copay when they come in. And you know, we make concessions for that and we will allow the patient to be billed for uh, the services. Uh, for the copay for that. Once the insurance pays, then we drop a bill to this for their copay. Okay. Who can I call if I want to get financial assistance or set up a payment plan? 
that again would be our customer service department. They they are actually like a jack of all trades. They do a lot of things there. So um, <laughs> you can contact that customer service line. Uh, the eight hundred six two one seven six seven seven, and then they can go ahead and get that set up for you. There's usually an application process uh, that may require a couple of items um, for just to go with the application to make sure that the patient does qualify. But there are different levels of financial assistance. So even if they don't qualify for one hundred percent, there's still a chance they could uh, qualify for at least seventy five or fifty percent off. One question that came in was, I have Medicare A and B. Will this cover all of the costs of chemo and radiation therapy? So Medicare is one of those insurances that they do not cover usually anything 100%. There's an 80-20 um, policy with Medicare, and there's a, a deductible that the patient has to meet every year before they'll even start paying anything. It's a low deductible. So this year it was $203. It usually goes up a little bit every year. Um, but what usually happens is once the patient has met that deductible, then any charges or bills that go to Medicare, they will pay at 80% and the patient will be responsible for 20% of that bill. And a lot of patients, you know, who cannot, uh, if they can, we always advise that you can, um, if you can pick up a supplement if possible, uh, supplements are really good because supplements usually come in and will pay 100% of whatever the patient's coinsurance, Medicare coinsurance is after the payment from Medicare. Okay. Um, we had a question from someone. They said, I am not a permanent resident of the United States and I have no health insurance. Can I still get treatment? Uh, we do actually have several patients that do come in that are maybe visiting from another country, something happens, and they don't have that means of insurance here in the state. So we do have programs offered by Riverside that um, can help in finding coverage or even providing financial assistance for a patient that may be um, from another area, from another country, and do not have um, actual uh, stateside insurance. And then what we do is ask you once again, once ask the patient to contact that customer service number, and then they can point the, um, provide the information needed to the patient of which contacts they would uh, need to get to uh, to help them with that situation. But we will not refuse to see a patient even if you do not, you know, have insurance or come in from somewhere else. Okay. And as a final question. Are there programs that can help cover the cost of my drugs for the cancer treatment or maybe the medications for any side effects of the cancer treatment? Actually, there are programs uh, through drug companies that will help with co-pays for co or co-insurance for any drugs that they provide, that they manufacture. Uh, I can use one example, Nulasta, which is a big medication that a lot of our cancer patients use for uh, after, after they've been treated to help prevent, you know, um, certain side effects. And so it's, a, it's an expensive medication, but there is a, a copay assistance program for Nulasta. And then what we would do is if the patient's on that medication, which we find out when we do the authorization process, what the drugs are on that treatment. And then we would set up uh, to go ahead and have that patient enroll in the program with the drug company that provides Nulasta, and then they would cover in co-insurances for that particular medication. There's also um, patient assistance programs such as Patient Advocate Foundation that also helps patients that they're not necessarily drug companies, but they help patients with uh, co-insurances on their most of the time, it's just the medications themselves. They don't cover for help with the actual administration of the meds, but for the actual drugs themselves, which is usually where the costs lie, uh, they can help with uh, um, help with helping the patient on covering some of those costs there. And that's a simple filling out an application uh, that can be submitted. We can do to help the patient with that piece as well, because we would keep track of when the grant came in and how, billing out those particular claims or EOBs to the uh, PAF once uh, we get information back from the insurance company. Okay. 
Well, thank you, Ebony, and, and thank you for working with our survivorship committee. We're just your wealth of knowledge. Thank you. Well, thank you. And, and thank you for having me. Anytime that I can offer any kind of assistance to help our patients, it's all about the patients. So we want to make sure that uh, we can do whatever we can to make this a, a less scarier time for our patients uh, when they do come in. Thank you for having me. Great.